I just discovered the best New Year's movie to watch. And now it's going to be my tradition to watch this either on New Year's Eve or New Year's Day for the years to come. As long as I can find this movie, because as you can see from the title and the thumbnail, this is the long forgotten Catherine Bigelow directed movie written by James Cameron called Strange Days. A former policeman, Lenny Nero, who's moved into a more lucrative trade, the illegal sale of virtual reality, like recordings that allow users to experience the emotions and past experiences of others while the bootlegs typically contain, well, not the best sort of instances, Nero is shocked when he receives one showing a murder. He enlists a friend bodyguard played by Angela Bassett to help find the killer and the two soon stumble upon a vast conspiracy involving the police force Nero once worked for, taking place on pretty much the days before and the days coming on New Year's Eve 1999. This film had come out in 1995 where you know a lot of people were freaking out the end of the year, the whole thing turning to 2000s. It was a weird kind of year I'm sure but this I can't express enough. I never thought I'd be doing a video on a movie this old or in general just talking about this movie but I finished the movie right now and I had to talk about it and I think a lot of you guys are probably going to enjoy this experience as well so if you do want a place to watch it it is very hard to find on physical media if you are in the United States but it is streaming currently as this video is up on HBO Max right now so I heavily recommend if you're watching this video watch it then go put it on your list and plan for an experience for two and a half hours to watch this movie because I don't think that you will regret it but the best way to kind of sum up what is this movie because it has a very much a large cast with Ray Fiennes and Angela Bassett and of course Vincent D'Onofrio and Juliette Lewis and even Michael Wincott who was amazing in Nope last year. This is a neo-noir crime sci-fi drama that very much has vibes of Blade Runner and vibes of say things like I don't know like Seven but a movie that it actually re really much reminded me of that had just come out previously is a movie called Reminiscence starring Hugh Jackman now that movie did not get a lot of great reviews I liked it personally I thought that movie was very much tailor made for me but this is the better version of that movie in fact this is the definitive version like Thinking that this movie came out in 1995 is like one of the most way ahead of its time type of films that I have ever experienced. Like watching this movie, I'm sitting here like, you could tell me this movie was made last year and it would feel as timely as it did back in 1995, as timely as it does now. But the thing with this movie is that it bombed completely. It almost killed Catherine Bigelow's career, like as a director. And this really much looked as like, oh shit, this is it. And even for the same career and the stars of the stars in this film, but this film, it's kind of weird when you look at it, it's just, it's one of those movies that came out and I feel like now just has a cult classic following behind it. Because the only reason I know about this movie is because one of my close friends in this space texted in our group chat and said, if you have not watched this movie, you absolutely should. And both of me and my other friend watched it and we loved it. We really fell in love with the vibe of this movie. And I think that's one of the things that I truly was taken back by was how greatly written the script is for this. I think people do not understand how good of a script writer that James Cameron can be. And a lot of people give him shit for his Avatar movies and certain other films that he's made. But, you know, I'm one of the ones that kind of do appreciate how he writes very simplistic stories, but when it comes down to the actual screenplay, he always usually hands it off to someone else. And I think with his simple stories, the thing that Cameron's so good at, crafting a larger than life world that we truly can all come and experience in one of the most unique vibes and ways. And for a movie that came out in 1995, this is a movie that holds up in a ton of those manners. And I'm so excited about this film. Like, I'm so excited that I discovered it. And I'm so excited that there is kind of a New Year's movie that I can go watch. Not that shit show New Year's movie that came out a couple not even a couple years ago. It was actually a long time ago. We're not here to talk about that movie. We're here to talk about this film. And from James Cameron's story and the world that he crafts here to Catherine Bigelow's incredible directing, which we've seen in Point Break, The Hurt Locker, Zero Dark Thirty, Detroit, whatever you want to say, she's one of the most top tier talented directors out there. And from what she was able to create with Strange Days kind of formulates all those ideas and more because while it's about two and a half hours, you do not feel that runtime. The film really takes its time building up the world, building up these characters, specifically Ray Fiennes as Lenny, and you really start to come out and understand who he is and all these different people in his world and maybe how he's not on the best side of all of them and how sometimes he is. But it's a mystery that when you actually see who is behind it all, 
The twists and turns revolving all around here really bring that pulpy and gritty, dirty feeling that I feel like I've been missing. And fans of Cyberpunk, if you've played that video game, will really dig some of the stuff in here because some of the things in here are elements that are kind of placed into Cyberpunk, of course, taking place in 1990 instead of 2077. The vibes that I actually really dig about that is that, you know, you are pretty much watching these POV shots because you do get to see the memories of these people. And the POV shots are exquisite. The opening POV shot in general, this heist that's kind of going on, is one of the most intense things that I've seen in a 90s movie in quite a while. And I was really engaged with that. But each and every POV sequence becomes more and more dirty, gritty. And they call, the, you know, there's these snuff VR films that are kind of going around on the black market. And they are very gross to watch like no not gonna lie like it was very disturbing me to watch some of these and it kind of gave me vibes of, again of like seven and some of the other neo-noir movies that you can talk about where you were literally seeing someone rape and kill someone and and that's really hard to watch in a movie and the way that Catherine bigelow shoots it is disgusting you fully believe what is going on and I loved how she was able to create the tension in all those POV shots. And again, all of the 1990s and making it feel like a sci-fi world that again is truly lived in nowadays. But also something that feels completely realistic that if you were to tell me that this is a device that's going around nowadays, I would fully unbelieve it. It is one of the most fascinating things that I think you can see in a Hollywood picture nowadays and the way that it does craft and touch on, of course, snuff films killers in our world vr and the fascination and obsessions of those video game type things and even the way that it kind of touches on the corruption in the police department is also something that i was very intrigued with and again every twist and turn that you truly go throughout here left me wondering what the next thing was going to be and i think that's one of the things that i was most ex excited to experience in within this film and completely baffles me that this is a movie that no one talks about how did I just find this out? I get it. I'm 25 years old. I'm way younger than maybe some people who have heard about this movie or were alive when this movie came out. But come on now. Seriously? I genuinely mean that. With two top tier talented people involved with the making of this movie, this should be a movie that most people are talking about and clamoring for. Like, how do we not have a 4K or Blu-ray release already of this? I need it right now. It's really hard to dive any more deeper into this movie without really much giving away spoilers. So I'm not going to dive any more deeper into this film. I do just want to say, go and watch this film. This is a quick video I wanted to make to really much explain and express my excitement for my new favorite new year's film that maybe none of you guys have ever heard of and you absolutely should go and watch it ray fines is incredible in this angela bassett is really good and honestly tom sizemore juliet lewis michael wincott vincent d'onofrio i mean every single person involved in this movie is absolutely fantastic but for me i think the true star of this film is the director catherine bigelow and of course the story written by james cameron i'm obsessed with this movie i'm going to tell every single person to watch it before it leaves hbo max i have no idea how long it's been on there i have no idea how long until it's going to leave so if you're watching this right now and it's as early as you caught this video make sure to go watch the long forgotten but absolutely should be beloved film from Catherine Bigelow and James Cameron, Strange Days. Thank you so much again for watching this. Hit that like and subscribe button. Lots more movie reviews coming up soon. And of course, until next time, stay classy.